Hello everyone. This week I'm going to be talking about a little bird that can fit in the palm of my hand, called a dandelion. The word dandelion means dull palm, but they're anything but dull. These little migratory shorebirds, waders, have stolen my heart, and if you watch my video, you will see why. I start my video in September, October, when they arrive in their thousands in the late fall and early winter. And I'm not the only one that loves them. Peregrine falcons love them too, and make them dance across the bay. And I want you to listen to this. I'm quoting from an article written by Graham Sorensen. He's the BC Projects Coordinator for Birds Canada. I'll be putting a link in my description to the Birds Canada website. Please take a look, it's really interesting. When's the last time you encountered a flock of birds? Was it the 300 Canada geese flying over in a V while you were walking down the street or dozens of American robins landing in a tree while you were out birding? In the Fraser River estuary, flocks of birds can reach a different scale entirely. Imagine striding along Boundary Bay in Delta, BC and seeing 13,000 Dunlin in a murmuration over the water while thousands of northern pintails and American widgeons float on the shallow coastal water. Or imagine counting 3,200 snow geese overhead. These big numbers represent actual flocks that birders encountered during recent bird counts in the estuary. That was written by Graham. And he could have been writing about me. <laughs> Now, Danlan are small, plump shorebirds with a droopy, down-curved bill. The breeding plumage is distinctive with a rufous or brown back and black belly. At the end of my video, I'll show you a video taken this week of them in their breeding plumage. In fall and winter, here in these first few video clips, they are plain greyish-brown above with a white belly often in very large flocks on mud flats and beaches, sometimes mixing with other shorebirds. The Dunlin breeds on the Arctic tundra, western and southern Alaska, and winters on coastlines throughout the northern hemisphere. Boundary Bay is an important bird area along the Pacific Flyway, and they congregate in their thousands, sometimes up to 20 to 35,000 at times. It's just quite spectacular. When they dance in the murmuration, it is often to evade a raptor. Their only defense is in their great numbers and they swirl and dazzle up and down and around and dance to confuse the predator. It's just incredible to watch. And sometimes I think they do it because it's fun. <laughs> the Danlin, Calydris alpina, is a small wader sometimes separated with the other stints in the genus Erolia. The English name is a dialect form of Dunleen, first recorded in 1531-1532. It derives from Dun, meaning dull, dull brown. The genus name is from the ancient Greek Calydris or Scalydris, a term used by Aristotle for some grey coloured waterside birds. The specific alpina is from the Latin and means of high mountains, in this case referring to the Alps. They are listed as of they, as bird species, they are listed as of least concern, which is which is good. Their habitat loss is another another question. The, the subspecies we see mostly here is Pacifica. An adult dunlin in breeding plumage shows the distinctive black belly which no other similar sized wader possesses. The winter dunlin is basically grey above and white below. Juveniles are brown above with two whitish V shapes on the back. They usually have black marks on the flanks or belly and show a strong white wing bar in flight. 
the legs and slightly decurved bill are black. There are a number of subspecies differing mainly in the extent of the rufous coloration in the breeding plumage and the bill length. Bill length varies between sexes and the female has a longer bill than the males. And on the tip of the Dunland's bill is a soft covering that fills with blood and with many nerve endings forming a sensitive probe that is used to locate invertebrate prey in the mud and sand. Although the bill can look sharp pointed, especially in a skeleton or dead specimens, in real life it is just blunt. Now here I am completely caught up inside the middle of a murmuration. The little birds are all around me. I think this is the most wonderful moment of my life. Dunlin are circumpolar breeder in the Arctic and subarctic regions. Birds that breed in northern Europe and Asia are long distance migrants, wintering south to Africa, Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Birds that breed in Alaska and, Can and the Canadian Arctic migrate short distances to the Pacific and Atlantic coasts in North America. Although those nesting in northern Alaska overwinter in Asia, Many done in winter along the Iberian south coast. Now this is another raptor chasing the Dunlin. This is a northern harrier. We have so many migratory birds and ducks. And the raptors arrive too, to feast. The bald eagles usually take larger prey like the ducks. But the peregrines and harriers go after the Dunlin. I'm a citizen scientist for Birds Canada and I submit, uh, I submit shore and water bird reports every month during fall, winter and spring. Please look at the link to Birds Canada my description, it's, it's really interesting. I think monitoring bird numbers and documentation is so important for the future and survival of species. When researching Dunlin, I found the, the Birds Canada pages and team members really helpful, as always. Let me read you a bit more from the Birds Canada website while you watch and enjoy this wonderful murmuration spectacle. Now, this article is written by Pete Davidson. He's the Senior Conservation Advisor and um, Dr. David Bradley, Director of the BC Programme. It's really interesting. Shorebirds connect birds and places. They are symbols of coastal and interior wetlands, some of the richest and most threatened habitats on Earth. Shorebird behaviours, mesmerising murmurations and intricate individual beauty captive, capture the imaginations of millions of people. But shorebirds are challenging to study and understand. They are seldom in one place for very long. Many breed in remote boreal or arctic regions, then fly thousands of kilometres to temperate and tropical areas, stopping briefly at just a few spots on the way. The State of Canada's Birds 2019 estimated the loss of 40% of shorebirds from Canada since 1970. Understanding why, why that is remains a huge challenge, precisely because Shorebirds are so mobile and some of the best information on them comes from places in which birds spend just a few days each year. 
our new approach would be to count shorebirds over a much wider scale, the scale of the entire flyway by coordinating citizen science volunteers to track population changes over space as well as time. We need to focus on the regions along the Pacific Flyway where the birds tend to be the most settled and accessible as opposed to being constantly on the move as they are on migration. The most fitting places are where they spend their non-breeding period between the months of December and February. We chose a series of possible causes for shorebird population change to investigate. Habitat, habitat loss, predation, disturbance, pollution and climate change. Next, it was simply a matter of coordinating effort. Easy, right? Except the geographic area we need to cover a stretch from British Columbia in the north to Chilo Island, Chile in the south. To make this happen, the Migratory Shorebird Project was born under the leadership of the Point Blue Conservation Science and underpinned by new funding from the US Forest Service and the David and Lucille Packard Foundation. Fortunately, we were able to use existing citizen science surveys in California, Mexico and Canada, including the Birds Canada BC Coastal Waterbird Survey as a, as a foundation to build on. Thanks to a network of partnerships and intensive training, the monitoring effort expanded to 13 nations by 2020. The Migratory Shorebird Project must now be one of the continent's most extensive citizen science initiatives and is driven by the leadership of over 40 partner organizations and agencies. That's really interesting. This next article I'm going to quote from was written by Graham Sorensen, the BC Projects Coordinator, Pete Davison, the Senior Conservation Advisor, Dr. Daniel Ithier, Bird Population Scientist, and Dr. David Bradley, the Director of the BC Program, Birds Canada. To mark the 20-year anniversary of British Columbia Coastal Waterbird Survey and celebrate the contributions of, it, of its volunteers, our team recently published an in-depth analysis of this impressive citizen science, citizen science data set in the journal Avian Conservation and Ecology. The results have important implications for the conservation of birds and habitats along BC's coasts. Birds Canada began the British Columbia Coastal Water Bird Survey in 1999. The goal of the survey is to collect baseline information on the status and trends of water birds and investigate the impacts of natural and human-induced environmental changes on their populations. The combination of mild winters and nutrient-laden oceans and freshwaters made British Columbia's coastlines among the richest overwintering habitats for birds in the temperate world. Between September and April, Many species of ducks, geese, loons, grebes, gulls and seabirds congregate in the coastal waters and the arctic breeding shorebirds like Dunlin flock to coastal mudflats in huge numbers. The southern coastline also supports Canada's third largest human population with Metro Vancouver being Canada's most heavily urbanised coastal region. Since the Coastal Waterbirds Survey began nearly two decades ago, approximately 16,000 volunteers have contributed an estimated 50,000 hours to monitoring these bird populations throughout the winter. Their efforts have created one of the largest and most detailed monitoring data sets in British Columbia. That is what I... I I contribute to my, a very small part but I really enjoy it and it just it makes makes it worthwhile another thing um, Birds Canada is is doing 
is trekking Dunland and I find this really interesting. I'm going to quote a little bit more um, from the Birds Canada newsletter issue 13 of 2020 and I, I quote here. For 12 of the Salish sea species we studied, the population has declined or the species is overwintering in lower numbers when compared to 20 years ago. The same was true for just three species on the Pacific Ocean coast. For the first time in the region, our study reveals that the species feeding on aquatic invertebrates in the benthos, that means the rocks, sand and mud along the coast that are always underwater, or that get covered when the tide is high, are the ones that appear to be declining the most. This group includes the surf, white-winged and black scoters, long-tailed duck, black turnstone and dunlin. Previously, fish-eating species have been shown to be at highest risk of declines or distribution shifts. Note, our study confirms that fish eaters are still declining. This this new findings highlights the need to investigate how human activities are impacting the quality of benthic environment in the Salish Sea. Graham Sorensen um, is very involved in the tracking of Dunlin and I I'm quoting from this article, Tracking Dunlin and the Fraser Estuary. Um, it's written by Amy MacDonald. She's the BC Motors Coordinator for Birds Canada. Large flocks of Dunlin swirling in unis unison over Boundary Bay are a delight to watch. These shorebirds breed across the circumpolar Arctic and birds of the Pacifica subspecies congregate in the Fraser Estuary outside of breeding season. These Dunlin migrate south from Alaska. Some stay in the Fraser Estuary over the winter and some continue south along the, along the US coast and into Mexico. Many Arctic breeding and long distance migrant shorebirds are in steep decline. Overall, they have declined by 40% in Canada since 1970 and are in need of conservation action to ensure recovery. While Dunlin are not among those species with the most precipitous declines, ensuring they have access to good quality habitat throughout their annual journeys remains important. The Fraser Estuary supports globally significant numbers of Dunlin during migration and over the winter. Already an urban area, it is under further threat from proposed container terminal expansion. Recently, Birds Canada started a new research project studying the distance and frequency of Dunlin movements to better understand how they use the estuary over the fall and winter. We are tracking, this is Birds Canada talking here, we are tracking Dunlin using the MOTUS Wildlife Tracking System, a collaborative research, equipping the Dunlin with a radio transmitter network that uses radio telemetry telemetry to track small flying animals. Birds carry tra small transmitters that emit a unique signal that can be detected by a nearby receiver station. Birds Canada deployed 45 transmitters on Dunlin in October and December 2020 at Boundary Bay and Brunswick, Brunswick Point. They worked with a reduced team and took precautions to ensure safety and compliance with provincial health guidelines due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Once the transmitters were on the Dunlin, we needed receiver stations that could detect these tagged birds. This is where the collaborative nature of MOTUS really came into play. The key to the success of MOTUS is that all tagged birds can be detected on anyone's receiver. Therefore, the Dunlin we tagged can be detected on receivers maintained by Environment and Climate Change Canada that were already in the area. We also installed two new receiver stations along Mud Bay and Boundary Bay in collaboration with the City of Surrey and Metro Vancouver Regional Parks. Environment and Climate Change Canada is planning to install several new receiver stations along the Strait of Georgia 
for research on western sandpiper they may also detect and they may also detect tagged dunlin. Likewise, the, the receivers we install for Dunlin research may also benefit the Western Sandpiper network. Data from the Dunlin continue to come in through the receivers and we are excited to see preliminary tracks of Dunlin moving between Brunswick Point and Boundary Bay. As the MOTUS wildlife tracking system continues to expand in Western North America, we are looking forward to seeing where else Dunlin and other shorebirds travel along the Pacific coast. End of quote. I find that really interesting. Can you see the peregrine? She is way up above them, about to swoop down. winter here is my favorite time of year in my wild Vancouver. The bird life is just so spectacular. When the Dunlin are in a murmuration, a lot of other birds get swept up into the dancing race. Plovers, little ducks like teal, sandpipers. I filmed this clip just last week. There are not so many around now. They're busy migrating north again. And as you can see here, they're in their breeding plumage. Aren't they beautiful? I will miss them when they go and wait impatiently for their return again in the fall. I really hope you enjoyed my video and can see why I love these little waders. Please feel free to share my video and you're, if you're able, please consider, consider becoming a patron. The links are in my description. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Please stay safe. Be kind. Please respect wildlife. And always try to put nature first.